Good morning, family. I, we are here to, we are here to not say goodbye, but we're here to say see you later uh, to our dear friend, to our brother, to our son, to our nephew, to a, not only a local celebrity, but a worldwide celebrity. Mo means a lot of people, a lot of things to a lot of people. And today we've come to send him off right. We've come to, to approve, or we come to endorse what God has allowed. And so family, we are here to celebrate life because that's what Mo was. That's what Mo is. He's life. And so today we come to celebrate life. Let us pray. Father, we stand in this place and we are full of mixed emotions. We're full of things that God, you've given us from the very foundations of our being. You caused us to have emotions. You said in your word that there is a time to live and there's a time to die and there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. So we stand here today with our hearts heavy and our eyes filled with tears. We're trying, oh God, to wrap our minds and ourselves around what is going on and what is going on right now before us. And we pray right now for strength. We pray right now for total understanding. But God, most of all, we pray for healing. We pray for healing of our minds, we pray for healing of our spirits, we pray for healing of our hearts, knowing God that you are the one that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think. So God, we pray right now that you wrap your arms around us, that you wrap your arms around Sansi, God, that you wrap your arms, oh God, around Mo's uncles and his family, Father, in the name of Jesus. We need you like never before, right now, God, and we pray that God, you, oh God, step in in the days ahead, in the weeks ahead, in the months ahead, in the years ahead, and give us what we need to move forward. God, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be reading in your hearing Psalms 121, verse 1 through 8, uh, and then I'll be reading St. John, the 14th chapter. Uh, the first through the sixth verse, it says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer his foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not spite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this day forward and even forevermore. The gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter, the first through the sixth verse, it reads, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know. And the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know? the way Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh to the father except by me at this time I'm going to ask uh, Miss Stacy to come uh, she's going to come and to sing uh, a solo and then after which my friend uh, is going to come uh, and give words uh, of reflection of Mo uh, because of because of COVID, they ask that you sing here and that you speak there so that we don't cross contaminate. So you can come up here and sing uh, at this microphone.
Okay. So, you, yeah, because I've already, quote, unquote, contaminated this. So you go here and read and sing, and then you will come here uh, and give reflections. Hello. <clears throat> we celebrate our Lord Jesus with praise and thanksgiving, who has sent us an angel, Mogaba, through his amazing mother, Sonsi Gaba, Mo was a blessing to us. He so profoundly and positively impacted our lives. So we give thanks in scripture and in song. <clears throat> the scripture is from Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. <clears throat> Amen. We give you praise. We give you praise. Lord, now and always, we give you praise. high and our voices to the sky we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise lord now Thanks for making me follow that. Whew. Good morning, everybody. My name's Jeremy Kahn. Hey, Mo. Uh, that's how I would greet him every time. Because if he didn't know I was coming up, and Sansa, you can attest to this, I'd always get a Jeremy. And it was one of my favorite things to hear. Um, and I don't know when this kinship, this bond between I, he and I started, but. Um, I know we're all going to miss him greatly, so I want to read this poem before I uh, tell a few stories, hopefully some you haven't heard. And I think this poem by Linda Ellis, it's called The Dash, encompasses everything that we should be and everything that Mo was. I read of a man who stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that the first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. 
for that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth, and now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you lived your dash? It's 14 years, but this guy has touched more lives in 14 years than I think all of us combined will be able to. Um, the ability to spread love, his positivity, all the things that he encompassed. Um, you know, I think I'm a good guy and being around him, I want to be an even better person. All the things that I've heard him say, uh, the time we got to spend together. Um, there's just so many stories that I could sit here and tell, and I don't know how many that all you guys know. Um, three of my favorites. The, the first one was uh, when we were at the Oriole game, and he threw out the first pitch, and he got his chance to meet all the different players. Um, and he, he thought he was actually throwing out the first pitch of the game. Correct me if I'm wrong. And he was mad that the Yankees won that day. Um, and I think he thought he was throwing the pitch to Jacoby Ellsbury, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and he, Mo was on a, quite a bit of medicine, and when we were in the suite, he started to get tired. And it sounds like you had to get up, and he asked if I would hold him. And I held him, I think, for the next four innings. And you asked me if I needed a break, and I said no. And I think that's probably where this bond started, maybe a little bit earlier. But he's an incredible kid with the most amazing laugh, and I got to learn all those different laughs. The courtesy laugh, the, the really, when you really got him, and even when he felt like he got you, he kind of had this, oh, shucks, I got you, and then he starts laughing. And you all know it. I mean, it's, uh, the radio station did a promo, and they echoed his laugh at the very end, and it got me when I was in the car. I was, was crying my eyes out um, listening to it. Some of the other things that I love about him is just his sense of humor and I guess his genuine thought process. Uh, I, I told this story on the radio the other day that I went over there once we got Comcast set up in the house and he was watching the Food Network. I was like, Mo, what are you watching the Food Network for? He goes, because I'm a foodie. And I said, I've only seen you eat mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese and chicken nuggets. And he goes, yeah, I like food. I'm a foodie. I'm like, all right, well, you're a foodie then. Um, and then all the little things that that means so much to me, uh, the, the Big Mo Show. My favorite thing about Mo is what he did that night, and it just tells you everything you need to know about the little guy. So we finally set up and were able to accomplish something, and if you guys listen to it, and I'm sure you have, at 14, to be that confident, to have that much swagger, it's, it's incredible. I, I would have never been able to do that at 14 years old, just get on the mic and not only talk, but lead in and out of the commercial breaks and how good he was on the fly. When we went into Mover time, as he called it, and then said, we're going to keep this crazy train a rolling. And it's like, where did he come up with that? Who, where did he hear that from? Uh, but he was, he was so amazing that night because Sanzi told me that he had a question to ask me because he wanted to do something to start off the show. And I walked in and said, what's up? And he goes, my friend Justin passed away yesterday, so I'd like to do a moment of silence for him at the beginning of the show. Here he is having his big night, and all he could think about was his friend who passed. And to me, it just tells you everything you need to know about him. And if we all could be a little bit more like Mo, I think this would be a better place. I mean, I sit back and I, I, I think about the time we shared, some of the memories we've had. Telling Manny Machado, <laughs> Manny said, what would you like to see me do this year? And I think he said, hit 50 home runs and not get suspended. He called into the radio show one time. He must have been on hold for so long. We heard the toilet flush in the background. I'm like, what in the heck? He said, you flushed the toilet? And then that laugh came out. And he just started laughing. He wasn't even embarrassed. He just started laughing like, eh, you know, when you got to go, you got to go. I, I miss him greatly, and, and I, I do want to say, um, and give my thanks to the family, Sanzi. Um, I'm not as strong as Baywan. I'm not as stylish as Indiga. <laughs> but you got a brother in me for as long as you guys will have me. You guys have become family. I know my wife and kids know that I tried to make every day work to where I could see him. Um, 
for a half an hour, two hours, <laughs> however much time I got. I probably annoyed the hell out of you guys by stopping by. But um, words won't do justice, and I feel like I'm a guy that I talk for a living, that I always have the right words to say. And I wrote down a bunch of stuff, and I ripped it up because I just wanted to speak from the heart up here that I miss him greatly, and it, it's going to come and it's going to go, but I just want to make sure that the spot that I'm in, the position that I have, that I never let anybody forget about him, that I keep pushing. I've already got ideas of things I want to do to raise money in his honor. We'll send it wherever. Um, Johns Hopkins, I've got people talking to me about golf tournaments and things, and uh, we're going to make a push to get a street named after him as well. But to understand the, just how great this kid was and the people that he touched, I mean, we had all kinds of celebrities sending in videos because they wanted to, to talk to him. We had people calling into the radio show, um, and they just wanted to speak to him. There were guests that night when we did the Big Mo show that we didn't know were calling in. They were listening to the show. And they said, how do I get in? And they were calling people, and we, I was texting, and my mic goes out, and Mo's like, hey, I guess I'm going to do the rest of the show by myself. You guys are going to have to deal with me. But there were a couple of great moments. Um, the one that made me laugh the hardest was Mo was uh, talking about going to homecoming. And he said he had a homecoming dance. I'm like, oh, so you're, you're going to get out there and dance? And he's like, well, I can't really dance. He started talking about the surgeries he had. He said, but I sure can bust a move from time to time, which he could. Um, I love him. I love you guys. I appreciate you, and I'm going to miss him greatly. <laughs> Sorry, I like to think I'm a handsome man, but I'm an ugly crier. But thank you guys for letting me be a part of his life. And, I, you know, I had so many people say, oh, thanks for all that you did for him. He'll have no idea, and I wish I could have told him how much he did for me. Thank you. Now you just said you don't know how you were gonna follow up the song, and now I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna follow you up. <laughs> when I thought about uh, this honor that's been given me today, Bay Wan, I, I thought about you, and I thought about, I thought about your brother, I thought about, I thought about Santi, I thought about you all, I thought about how close-knit your family is. Uh, and we go back quite a ways. This is not the first time you and I, all of us, have seen this before us today. We met because there was a special person that brought us together some years ago. Tony brought us together some years ago. And now we're back here at this place and we're trying to figure out exactly how to wrap our minds around yet another loss. You said something the other night when we were together last week when Mo passed, you said, let's not allow these moments to be the moments that we come together. Watching all the many things about Mo that's been saved on my TV I spoke to Kelly yesterday and she asked me what I was doing after I got home from camp. And normally I walk in the morning to exercise, but yesterday I walked last night when I got home. And I walked and I talked to God. And in talking to God, I was talking to Mo. Mo, God, and I were having a conversation. And today I want to give you a glimpse of that conversation. The word of the Lord gives us in the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter and about the 10th verse. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. The Bible gives us evidence over in Philippians 4.13 
you may know it like this, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Last night I got a, I got a, a different translation in the, in, the, in, the, in the English Bible. It says something like this, Christ gives me strength to face anything. For a few moments I want to talk from the subject, I am most strong. I am most strong. Sansi, it's, it's amazing how in 14 years, a young man can capture the hearts of people from Baltimore to Beijing. It's amazing how this young man, even in the midst of a pandemic, the world stops. They take a moment and bow their head to remember the life of this young man. This young man is, is Mogaba, but to you, he's your son, he's your baby. Uh, he is your nephew, he's your cousin, he's your co-host, he's your friend. He's a little brother, he's a big brother. He's everybody's cousin. To the Baltimore Ravens, he's an inspiration. To the Baltimore Orioles, he's his biggest fan. But to whoever he is, he, he is somebody to not just a small group of people, but he's somebody to everybody. How then in 14 years can a person make such an impact that people will call in? I've seen multiple Instagram videos having a moment to remember this young man. This young man from Baltimore who's captured the hearts of so many, not just because of his ailment, but because of his attitude. His attitude of being most strong is not just a hashtag. It's not, a, it's, it's, it's not something that we wear on a t-shirt, but it's a way of life. It's a motivation. It's a mantra. It's a swag. It's a confidence. It's a self-esteem that one, when he wakes up in the morning, though he may can't see what you can see, he believes that the possibilities are endless. It's about being most strong. It's about being most strong in a society where people are looked at because of the color of their skin or they looked at because of uh, uh, the, their sexual preference. It's, it, it's, it's who we are based upon class and status. Most strong breaks all of those barriers. Most strong says, I'm going to win regardless of the surmountable obstacles that may be in my way. Most strong is not a t-shirt. Most strong is not a hashtag. Most strong is a way of life. And after sitting with this young man two weeks ago and watching him laying on his mother's bed, he showed a strength that in his presence, it's nothing more for you to feed off of what's in the atmosphere. A lot of people talk about nowadays when they come in certain rooms that they don't like certain energy. But can I tell you, being in the presence of Mo, there was an energy that he gave off that made you want to go out and fight the good fight. It made you want to believe that no matter where you are, no matter what status in life you were in, it made you to believe that you could and can be greater. I'm talking about Mo Strong, y'all. I'm not talking about a t-shirt. I'm not talking about a hashtag. I'm not talking about a mask. I'm talking about a way of life. That way of life that caused him to throw out a first pitch. That way of life that caused now that every home run ball that's been hit in Baltimore since the season started, it seems to get carried over the right field, the center field, or the left field fence. Because there's a little boy that's reaching down and grabbing the ball. This morning I got up at about 4 o'clock and I watched a movie that I hadn't watched in years called Angels in the Outfield. You know the story, Angels in the Outfield. Uh, the angels were not doing too great, but they employed some angels. I believe today that sitting in center field in Camden Yards, there's a little boy 
who may not have been able when he was here to see a game, but now he can see crystal clear. God has given him eyes to see. And can I tell you, his eyes are on you and I. See, most strong, like I said, it's not a t-shirt. It's not a hashtag. It's a way of life. The same way of life that his mother was able to allow me to hear from the president of the Pro Football Hall of Fame that Mo had been inducted. And I don't believe after hearing that that day that Mo was inducted because of his disability, but because he displayed the same grit, the same gut, the same desire, the same fight, the same fire. All of those things that Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, Reggie White, Jack Lambert, Deion Sanders, and all of the many men that are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You see, they call it swag. They call it confidence. Some call it a dog. I call it Mo Strong. Mo Strong is not a t-shirt, Baywan. It's not a, a mask. It's not a hashtag. It's a way of life. It's how when you wake up in the morning and your bills are due and you got more bills than money, but you suck it up and you put your hand to the grindstone and you do whatever needs to be done so that you and your family won't be sleeping outside. That's most strong. Most strong is when you got a diagnosis and a prognosis that's been placed before you and you don't know how and when you're gonna be healed, but you still function as if the world has given you another opportunity. You don't look at obstacles as obstacles, but you look at obstacles as opportunities. That's most strong. Most strong says I can do anything I put my mind to. Most strong says when it's the fourth quarter and you need three points, your kickers miss every kick all game long, but you put the kicker in position to kick the game winning field goal and the ball goes through the uprights and the people go crazy. That's most strong. Most strong causes you to come through the tunnel even when your record does not say that you're a winner, but you walk through the tunnel and you dance in front of millions of people. That's most strong. Most strong says when you're in a hitting slump, but you still hit a home run to win a game. That's most strong. Most strong is not a t-shirt. Most strong is not a hashtag. Most strong is a way of life. Most strong is giving birth to a young man that despite his bouts with illness, despite his bouts with setback, he still believed that he was just a regular child like everybody else. He, didn't, he did not allow his condition to become his conclusion, but he fought every day to be just like you and I, to look at his mother and be concerned about his mother's well-being before being concerned about his own. Baywan, that's Mo Strong. Mo Strong is not a t-shirt. Mo Strong is not a hashtag. Mo Strong is a way of life. So what is Mo Strong? What is it to be Mo Strong? Looking in Ephesians, when it gives us the evidence that to be strong in the Lord and to be in the power of his might, it gives us an affirmation to stand on, for us to believe that against all odds, we have been given strength from the inside in order to endure and to handle any hardship that's placed before us. Bible in Philippians, it says that I can do all things. I believe that this gives us confirmation to believe that no matter what is stacked against us. We have the strength, we have the know-how, we have the fortitude to be able to push past and to be able to win at anything. So what is most strong? You ask me, most strong is courage. Most strong is a commitment. Most strong is consideration. Most strong lends no compromise. Most strong has no complaints. And most strong accepts every challenge. A few years ago, a few years ago, the Ravens honored Mo. Not Mo honored the Ravens. At the same time, the Ravens honored Mo as Mo honored the Ravens by giving him the opportunity to be able to give 
a pick in the draft. Mo sat down with his uncle at his flank and began to read in Braille the, the pick that is known as the only pick that's been read in Braille. Mo was able to speak the name and the last name of that gentleman, if I'm not mistaken, was Powers. I believe that day that not only did the world see a young man full of power, but he, they were able to then be exposed to what is most strong. I spoke to his mother the night he passed and I hugged her and I, say, I said to her that Superman has flown away. But Superman left you something that now it's up to you to pick up and wear. And that is his cape. If you know anything about superheroes, you understand that most superheroes or all superheroes make sure that the only thing that they have, two things, one is that their identity is always not revealed. And then two, they always never leave without their cape. But can I tell you this Superman called Mo, he left his cape behind. Why did he leave his cape behind, Bishop? I'm glad you asked because he wanted all of us to have a piece of what is considered most strong. So today, Sante, I ask with permission that if, if those of us who want to pick up the mantle of being most strong, that periodically from time to time you break a piece of that cape off and put it in the hands of a man or a woman or a child who believes that they are capable to be most strong. I said it before, I know you're tired of hearing it, but I'll say it again, most strong, it's not a t-shirt. Most strong, it's not a hashtag, it's a way of life. For you to take that power in your hand and believe that you can be whatever you want to be. You see, that's most strong. Most strong says that I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Most strong says, yea, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Most strong says, and we know all things work together for our good. Most strong says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. As I concluded my walk and got to the hill before I went in the house, Mo told me one thing as he pointed at me with that smirk. He said, Bishop, tell him that they're on the clock and what choice are they gonna make you're on the clock what choice are you gonna make see when the Ravens were on the clock and Mr. Ozzy Newsom had to make a pick they trusted Mo to relay that pick to the world Mo wanted me to ask you or give you the mandate that in order for you to be most strong, you are on the clock. The question is, what will you choose? Will you choose to be most strong or will you choose not to? Will you choose to allow what you're dealing with or what you're going through define you? Or will you pick up the pieces and score the touchdown in life? Hit the home run. Run as fast as you can. Be all that you know you can be. Because can I tell you, there's no complaining when you're most strong. There's always a challenge when you're most strong. There's always, there's always a time for you to be considerate when you're most strong. There's no time to waste when you're most strong. I want you to do me a favor while you're sitting there, because see, I'm one of them preachers. If you talk to me, they want I'll talk back. I want you to look at somebody next to you and ask them a simple question. Look at him and say, are you most strong? Because I don't believe we came in here today to celebrate a young man who exuded the strength of 10 men. If you're gonna walk out of here in this space and in this energy and not go out here better than what you came. I want you to look at somebody eyeball to eyeball and ask them a simple question. Are you more 
strong. I know what your t-shirt says, and guess what? Somebody need to get me one in the 4X because I'm losing a lot of weight. I need one too, but here it is. It's not a t-shirt. It's not a t-shirt. It's not a mask. It's not a jersey. It's not a baseball. It's not a football. It's a way of life. So do me a favor. Until they make you mad, until they upset you, until you get on your until they get on your nerves, just keep asking people, are you most strong? Don't throw it up. Don't wear the shirt. Don't hashtag it if you're not most strong. Sansi, you got the mantle of being most strong. And you wear it, and you wear it well. Baywan, you got the mantle of being most strong. You wear it, and you wear it well. Dinka, you got the mantle of being most strong. You wear it, and you wear it well. Family and friends, those of you who've come in contact with this young man, you have the mantle of being most strong. Wear it and wear it well. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, that our funeral director come and give us instruction. But while he's coming, I want you to look at somebody. I want to hear you ask him. Look at him and ask him, are you most strong? Y'all not talking. Look at somebody and ask him. Look at him with that look. I know you look with that look. That look, you know that look. Give him that mo look and ask him, are you mo strong for real? Are you mo strong for real? Because if you mo strong, it's not about talk. It's about walk. This young man walked. He didn't do a whole lot of talking, but he walked. That's mo strong. Ladies and gentlemen, just a couple of brief announcements before we make our way to the cemetery. For those of you that will be traveling with us, once you step to your vehicles, we'll ask that you please turn on your high beam, flash, um, high beam lights and your four-way emergency flashers. Also, as we're traveling on the roads, we ask that everyone please use extreme caution going through any intersections as well as making any lane changes, even though we will have a police escort. The dismissal order will be as follows, according to the cathedral's protocol. We'll ask that the, the pallbearers meet us in the back of the chapel. The funeral home, we will bring Mo down the center aisle, followed by the immediate family only. And at that point, we'll have you dismissed row by row, starting from the rear of the church, working our way forward, and maintaining social distancing at all times. Thank you.